is your sound off? Because it's always ringing. No, I'm okay. Yeah, my sound is off. I'm okay. You know, I'm going to still get to stop sit the hell down. What's going on, YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. It was a quiet weekend for myself. You know, yesterday was September 11th. Uh, we would like to send our condolences to all the families and friends who have been affected by the 9-11 tragedies from 15 years ago. Um, yesterday, I woke up um, watching MSNBC because sometimes I'd be watching Lock Up and stuff. But when I woke up, they were showing the full newscast of that day, that day mm -hmm. with um, Matt Lauer and um, Kat, Katie Curry. Mm -hmm. Katie Carr, yeah, and a couple other people that were there, and it was just like, oh my God, like they didn't know what was going on, and then it was like, it's a terrorist attack, and then, like, I've never seen that footage where they were talking about um, the, a plane going into the Pentagon, and that there was another plane, and they had no idea where this plane was, like, I, I, I it was just like, oh my God, like, this is really going on. And all I could think about was me being in school, not having a clue what was going on. The only thing that I remember is I came to school late, and I got to the fourth floor, and the lady was like, oh, my God, a plane went into the World Trade Center. Now, I didn't know what the World Trade Center was. I didn't know what it was at all, so I'm sitting in class like, you know, and then this white guy came to the class. He knocked on the door and was like, turn the TV on. Um, two planes went into the World Trade Center. I still didn't know what it was. Until the TV came on and I seen those big ass buildings. Like, oh my God, I just seen those buildings when I was in New York. And it was just crazy because we didn't know what was going on. All we knew is that they got a lot of speakers. was like, y'all got to turn these TVs off. Do not show this to the children or whatever. And that we were leaving school at noon. All I remember was I, I got on one bus. And the bus thing was so chaotic, I had to walk home from 22nd and, I guess if y'all know from my area, from 22nd and Hunting Park all the way to my house because the buses wasn't running. But I do remember like seeing it on TV and they just kept playing it back. The plane going into the building, the plane, um, the buildings fall. It was just a sad day. And it was sad to relive it again. Like after the after that building fall, I just, I was sitting here and I just cried because I'm just thinking like, all of those people that were trapped and they couldn't get out in the heat and the smoke, they had no choice either to burn or to jump into their death. You know, it's, it's something that we really should not forget because this could happen again. You just never know when it could happen again. And it's, it's funny because we do live our lives like, that ain't nothing gonna happen, you know. I, sh I don't say live in fear forever, but just be careful. And I hope that when you make your choice for the election this year, that you be careful with your thoughts and who do you think would be best to run this country? Because we can't afford to be under any more tax at all. But I, did you did you watch anything yesterday? I did not yet. I was at church yesterday, so I didn't watch anything. Um, I know CNN had played this special called 9-11 about the two yeah, French brothers. It. And see, I actually, I did own that DVD until I lost the DVD. But I had seen it so many times, and it's about these two French brothers who were here, who were in New York um, the week of 9, well, the week before 9-11. Excuse me. And they were doing, I don't even think it was the week, it was just that summer. And they were doing this documentary on New York City firefighters. And it just so happens that the fire company that they were with on the morning of September 11th, mm -hmm. they were a few blocks away from the World Trade Center when they got a call regarding a gas leak in the middle of the street somewhere, which was a few blocks away from the World Trade Center. So one of the brothers took his camera and he decided to go with the fire crew in order to, you know, film what was going on. But in the, the process of this all going on, you hear the first plane flying yeah. over them, directly over them, and you see everybody look up and the camera shoots up and that's when you see the first plane mm -hmm. hit the building. And that was the first and only footage that they have of the very first plane hitting the building because the footage that they were showing on the news 
on 9-11 of that plane hitting the building was the second plane hitting the second building because at that time nobody knew that there was footage of the first plane. But um, that day was kind of like me. Yours was kind of like mine at um, when I was at school other than all the TVs were on and nobody was telling them to turn that off. Um, it, it, it was just one of those things that was like, I cannot believe this is actually, like, it was a surreal thing. Like, watching it, you really did feel like you were watching a movie. Like, you really did. And the interesting thing about it is that if you go on YouTube, YouTube has tons and tons and tons of videos from that day. And watching old news broadcasts from 9-11, I remember seeing a few of them on YouTube. And, of course, all these years later, knowing, we already know what happened on that day. But on that day, the broadcasters didn't know what was going on. So they were just getting their information by people who were calling in. And I remember when the first tower had fell, and I forget what station it was that they had that I was looking at on um, YouTube. And when all the smoke came up, I remember the broadcaster saying, like, well, wait, telling the person who was talking to stop, like, I think another plane may have hit the building, not knowing that, no, the building fell. Yeah. Mm. But they couldn't tell because it was so wow. much smoke. So they thought that another plane had hit the building. And I'm sitting there watching it all these years later, like, no, that building fell. But yet they don't know because mm. it's happening. So it's it was it's crazy to re to relive it. Uh, a lot of things that were known, a lot of things that weren't known at that time. And you know, all these years later, we do know. But I think the beautiful thing out of all of this is that um, they were able to rebuild Lower Manhattan, the, the World Trade Center site. And I don't know if any of you have ever been there. If you haven't, I've been there. It is absolutely beautiful, the way they uh, constructed this memorial right there on the World Trade Center site. Of course, they have the new tower, um, one World Trade Center. A few years ago, they had named it the Freedom Tower, but it's no longer called the Freedom Tower. It's called One World Trade Center. And then they have the two giant pools uh, where both towers once stood, they turned those holes into this giant, two giant waterfall pools and going around the pools is each person's name who was killed on that day in each building and on the planes that crashed into those buildings along with the firefighters' names. It is absolutely beautiful. It will really take your breath away once you get there and realize where you are actually standing. You'd be like, oh my God, like, I cannot believe 15 years ago all of this took place here and to look at it 15 years later and to see the new tower that stands above all of this, it's just absolutely beautiful. But I mean, that's just a testament to let people know that you come over here and you attack us and we'll just rebuild and we'll make it better. And I remember when the, the, the tower first opened up or as they were building it, a lot of people were like saying, I don't know who would want to work back in there, like, you know. But then I really, I thought about it and I said, well, to say that is like saying, well, who would want to fly again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we all fly. Yeah, I fly. Like, and people got to go to work. So it's like, you know, I mean, the buildings didn't knock themselves down. There were planes that flew into them. So it's like, yeah, you know, you, you just, you continue to, that's why people say, before you walk out of the house, you need to pray. Okay? Mm -hmm. Pray, because you never know what you're walking into once you walk out of your front door. You just never know. So, you know, just always stay prayed up. And I don't care what religion you are, who you believe in, pray. Pray, right. pray. I was just watching, the, they were just showing this on Dr. Oz with the mothers who lost their, lost their children. Um, um, Sandra Bland's mother was saying, I think it was her mother, mm -hmm. um, who was saying like, no, that was, actually it was the guy that got choked. Eric Garner's mother. If you have your faith, and if you keep your faith with God, when things happen to you, you have something to lean on instead mm -hmm. of preparing yourself to mm -hmm. try to lean on something exactly and waiting for something to happen you should right. always keep your faith no mm -hmm. matter what it is keep your faith because things can happen that's powerful instead of preparing yourself for something to lean i knew that's yes they was going into that it was really a good show i, I don't know if dr oz is going to show it it was, it was his um season premiere so i don't know when the next time is going to come back on very powerful episode, and Devin Franklin was on there as well. Um, so we're going to move on. Uh, let me do a quick little sports update. Serena Williams did not win the U.S. Open. She lost in the semifinals to some girl, Pliskova. And 
she was dealing with the injury, so Serena Rip Williams also lost the number one ranking to Angelique Kerber, who won the U.S. Open. Congratulations to MG Kerber, and congratulations to Stan Wawrinka, who won the men's U.S. Open yesterday. And um, CM Punk lost his UFC debut to Mickey Gill. I don't know how he, well, he lost being choked out. But, you know, he transitioned, he left WWE, went to the UFC, and it was a big thing because he's 38 years old. They're like, why would he want to do this so old and he's been training? And you had the UFC fighters saying, like, no, he's good, he's been training with us, get in there and lose in the first round. So, but to get into that kind of an octagon and fight, it takes balls. So, congratulations to CM Punk, but... You know, a lot of people were not on his side because they didn't like how he left. Mm -hmm. He just up and quit wrestling, just quit. Like, the fans really, and I, he blocked me on it because I just, like, he's not going to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he blocked me, like, two years ago. But still, it takes balls to do something like that. And I really love that sport, like, mixed martial arts because just because you're winning, it could take a split second and you could be on your ass. And my guy lost um, Saturday night. I'm so mad. So I was there over in, you know who I'm showing you, mm -hmm. he was going to fight him. He was going for the championship and lost in the first round. Got knocked out. It's just, you could be winning, he was winning, and then he got knocked out, just like that. So yeah, so that's enough of that. So um, that's my little quick sports recap. Wait, Wait I'll, let me see something. We got a, okay. We got a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, because I wanted to see if you had something on it that I was thinking you'd do. Uh -oh. Um, also, by the way, I forgot to mention that Mikel and I will be at the women's, the Women of Bad Boy Women's Empowerment event, which is next Friday. Mm -hmm. It's twenty third. Yes, the twenty September twenty third is from eleven to three p.m. Faith Evans will be there. Total will be there. Lori Ann Gibson will be there, and there will be some special guests that will be there. As you know, that night. Uh, Bad Boy is coming to town, so if you're going to be in the Philadelphia area, come to Warm Daddy's. The, um, I don't have the address in my phone, but I'll have it on the flyer where you can attend. If you would like to attend to get a ticket, go to beautychronicles101.com. And of course, Mikel and I are going to be there. We're going to get some interviews with Faith Total and Ms. Lorianne Gibson. So I can't wait because I've been seeing like some of the clips from... Detroit and New York and Atlanta and it's a great event and they are actually there not no they not just not going to be there they face not just on the flyer and they talk and they you know talk about issues as being as women so again if you're in the Philadelphia area come on out to Warm Daddy's it's from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and you can get your tickets from beautychronicles101.com so we hope to see you there next Saturday I mean next Friday next Friday, September 23rd. Um, did you see Fix My Life on Saturday? No, I wasn't home on Saturday. So <laughs> I heard it was good. Was it, was it good? It was good? Iyana, it was great. Listen, this is right now, this is called the House of Healing. Just picture Bad Girls Club mixed with a little bit of Charm School and you and they're all over 35, and you put them in one house. And these are, what Yama is doing is, right now is dealing with the myth of angry black women mm -hmm. and the things that they go through. And Yama kept sitting there laughing to them, you're gonna hate me. There's gonna be times when I push you and make you go there, where the truth is gonna wanna fight, you know? Mm -hmm. She was just going there with these ladies. And one of the ladies was just like, I'm not ready to do this with everybody. But she's like, yo, you want to, but then again, you don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's that side telling you no. Mm -hmm. But you know what's really going on. And the girl started crying and all of this stuff. Like, it's about seven women. I don't remember their names. All I could do is remember the issues that was going on. Even the girl from the Players Club is in this. Ronnie, um, she is in this. But she really hasn't had, like, a big role yet. In the show. <laughs> it's like she's been on a lot of shows lately. But showing what? I don't know. She ain't doing that. 
She is a changed woman. Nah, just listen. Yeah, but she listen. was talking about <laughs> this. This ain't that type of party. I just came to dance. Wait, yes. but she gonna yes. talk about? Yes. <laughs> she talk about how they you know how they show like the clips. They she was saying like me and my mom we be having our issues. My mom told me fuck you, so I put a dildo on the wall and I attached it to the wall and told her no fuck you. I'm just like wait a minute, like you okay with saying that? And oh, y'all gonna play her saying that? She did that in her mom's house. In her mom's how? Oh, fuck she, you. Why did she have it? I don't know. No, how did she get it on the wall? Because it's got that little suction cup there. Yeah. X2 show everything. Uh, so, oh, you it on <laughs> bitch, you know. You know like that. <laughs> okay, so, so Iyana has the girls at the house. Iyana's like, oh, let me see those suction hole. Baby! <laughs> <laughs> So Iyana is just, she's giving them the rundown, and she was just letting them know, like, you're going to hate me. You're going to love me. She was just letting them know, and she was like, now ladies, I'm going to go, I'm going to go take a bath or whatever, I'm going to go lay down. <laughs> so Iyana left the house. So as soon as she left, you know, it was turn up time. Right. These girls, where the drinks at? Blah, blah, blah. Like, they just get ah! <laughs> getting their drinks. I can only imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 So the so the girls like they turning up or whatever. So they they go they cut to the scene where somebody had their cell phone out and they was recording what was going on because an argument broke out between one of the ladies who and she's she's an attorney and she's divorced and everything. And um, she's like I'm trying. She has a very pretty face to me. She's like I'm trying to go to bed mm -hmm. and then she's arguing with the girl named Alana who is a model or whatever. She's like 37. Blah blah blah. And she's just like, I want you to, like, can y'all turn down? Like, I'm trying to sleep. We got to get up in the morning, such, 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 such. So, you know, Iyana finds out about this the next day. And Iyana talks to the two women in front of everybody. Now, I was kind of disappointed with Iyana a little bit. Because it's like, I I Iyana, Iyana, you coming down on the attorney when you should be coming down on a lady that was turning up and everything and y'all just was like no you brought your energy you brought this and she was just like getting the lady together like no y'all didn't have to get up you had to get up you had to do this like y'all was making her speak in I form and not we as mm -hmm. in the group so she's like you know you you brought your little energy maybe it was something on that video that maybe if you seen that I know you seen that right I'm not the only one that closet pushed open on its own. And it's nothing there falling out. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. Maybe close it's it. Jeremiah. Just I don't know. We'll close it. Look, because we're working right now, Jeremiah. This is been open again. <laughs> working, okay? Pop ups when I leave. Yeah, you know, Wednesday is his uh, it's I the eighth anniversary. Don't live. <laughs> or the ninth, yeah. Wait, no, it's the ninth. It's right. Wednesday the 15th? The 14th. 14th, yeah, because he right. died the day before my sister was here. Yeah. So, so y'all was getting her together. Then the lady just was like, I don't know what's going on. She, and she was, like, she was like, I spend so much time defending other people, but who's going to defend me? And then, like, that was just, like, one of the great points because Iyana got her to say it the right way. Mm -hmm. And then, while Iyana talked to, Iyana just was getting the girls together. Like, Iyana got them together about calling each other a bitch because mm. you know they were arguing. So Iyana was like, my grandmother is half black, half Native American. She had to work for so-and-so by while being called many names out of her name to feed her and her siblings or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Iyana was like, when you, you know, when you say the word, why would you want to just call another woman out of her name? It's like you just bring this and you bring negative and like it's just so much that you put when you bring that word out and all I could think of was Iyala what the hell did I do mm -hmm. it was just that powerful with Iyala speaking to the women so then after that went on guess who came on to the show Lyra Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend why did she come on because now she needs healing. She's 22 years old. I didn't know she was that young. And Rick Ross, you like him that young? Um, she's real young. She has a beautiful body. But Iyana got her together saying like, yeah, you were on that pole. That's how you learned 
how to do a whole bunch of stuff like Inyama was getting her together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, this is going to be she a great She used to be a stripper season. too? Yeah, she was a, that's how I think that's how she met Rick Ross, mm -hmm. being in the strip club. And uh, it, it's just, this, these episodes, these upcoming episodes are going to be great because you have seven broken women and Iyala is going to try to piece all of these women back together in this house. But that girl, Alana, she is a nasty witch. And I need Iyala to get her together. Because, like, you can't have prayer. And then she's going to say, well, I don't want to pray for y'all. Like, I don't even trust y'all. Like, how can I, how can I, how can y'all pray for me and I don't trust y'all? Don't even. And the, and the other girl was just like, the new girl, she just is not literal, but she just is like, you're bringing negative energy in this room, and we don't need your negative energy. And the girl Alana was just going. I mean, she was going off like she was on a different reality show, or trying to be on a, on a new reality show. Like these women are praying, and you're trying to mess that all up, and like they're holding hands and everything. I don't let everybody pray for me, and some in some cases that's true. But girl, you was just doing a little bit too much in this house. And, that, and I think next week y'all are going to have them beating up shit, like, you know, taking their anger out of stuff. And, I, and and something that I noticed that a lot of the women that they're dealing with is being sexually molested. And these are by people that they knew. You know, that's so usually it's a, the it year. Yep. They say like 90, 75, 85 so percent. Know. It's a very high number. Um, but yeah, it's going to be good. So if you missed last week's episode, I believe you can watch it on the OWN TV app. If you don't have the app, they still don't have no on demand. Um, it should be on demand too, because oh, I, I noticed that a lot of the shows on own are now on demand. And have you watched Queen Sugar? No, you did not. You didn't watch Queen this week has been a great I'm busy. gonna beat your <laughs> Queen Sugar is one of the best shows that I've watched on TV. Well, I will say this before you continue. I have caught up to last night and into this morning on shows that I've missed because like I said this has been a very busy week for me and it's going to get even busier especially this upcoming weekend because you know we're going to Virginia on Sunday who a church for a trip well no well it, it's it's a trip slash my pastor's going to go preach at a church in Virginia and so the whole church is going with him so this has been like a kind of busy week then yesterday was his anniversary that's why I was at church all day yesterday it's like been like Every day I've been doing stuff, like, and I haven't really been able to sleep. Mm -hmm. Like I want to. So you can't sleep? Or well, yesterday sleep? I did. Well, I'll say this, and I'll let you finish with Queen's Sugar. On Saturday, I did sleep. I slept most of the day on Saturday. I woke up Saturday morning. By 11.30, I was back to taking a nap. And I didn't get up until 4 o'clock that evening. And then yesterday, when I went to church, one of the deacons stopped me and said, well, where was you at yesterday for the men's breakfast? And I had I told you that. <laughs> My I listen. I listen. I I'm telling y'all, if I'm not here or if I'm not at work or at church, I'm in the bed. And I'm a sleeper. I love to sleep. So I know when they put me in that casket, when they do, I'm gonna sleep real good for eternity. <laughs> Boy, your body will. <laughs> I sleep, and when I sleep, I sleep. But go ahead, so Queen Joe. Queen Sugar, I'm not even going to give out like the whole scenario because I want you guys to watch it. But the show is directed by or created by Ava DuVernay and Oprah and everything like that. The show came on after the season premiere, I mean, season finale of The Heaven and Have Nots. And the season finale of The Heaven and Have Nots, I was not ready. Because normally Tyler would be hyping death, 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 somebody's going to die. Bitch, he ain't even say none of that. Oh, you don't want to miss it because it's going to leave you gasping. And bitch, it left me gasping. And then it went straight into Queen Sugar. So I was thrown off mm -hmm. and I was excited. So I had to rewatch it. And it was commercial free. Queen Sugar, bitch, I'm never going to miss an episode. And I know I really like this because I watched it more than two times. I'm talking about the first episode and the second episode. And I didn't watch it just because... I needed to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. I loved it because it was so real. Mm -hmm. And ooh, you see what families be going through, like before the death, 
you see what families go through after the death, and it just was like it's a difficult time. Yeah, it's very, it's a very difficult time. Emotions, arguments will be had, and I can pinpoint a lot of the people that's on this show. I can say, oh, this so and so, and that's and that's what you call them. You know, I was just able to do that, and so far. You know, this storyline is great because everybody have their own issues and then they're de dealing with the main issue, which is the father, the death of their father who owns this land and, um, and you know, everybody's going to buy up the property and everything. And not only that, you have one of the daughters who's dealing with um, her husband being caught up in a scandal mm -hmm. because... The whole team, I guess, allegedly raped this girl. Mm. And the husband said he ain't had nothing to do with it, but they had him on video yeah. picking up the girl and taking her into the room. So she has that that issue going on while dealing with the death of her father. What does he play, like football? Uh, basketball. basketball. He's a basketball player. Okay. Um, so then you got the son, Ralph Angel. Ralph Angel, he is a former drug addict. Also, he is taking his son in because the mother was a drug addict so I guess she left him somewhere or did something where to now he's just like you can't see your son no more so he's keeping the son away from his mother all the while he can't find a job he's robbing stores to like you know mm -hmm. keep things you know you know you know what I'm saying people. yeah <laughs> and he has his own issues like he's trying to protect his son blue from he, he didn't want his son there at the um, hospital. He he's just trying to shelter his son from so much. And his aunt, who I know her face, she used to be on the show uh, South Central, was which was a long time ago. But I love seeing her act, and she was just trying to tell him like, there's nothing you can do to stop him or to protect him from the world because mm -hmm. things are going to be as they are. He's need. He's need he needs to see this. Mm -hmm. He needs to be at that hospital. He needs to go to the funeral. He needs to do this and do that. But something about this little boy, he carries a doll with him. Mm. And it's a female doll. And I'm not sure what's the connection with it is yet, if he thinks of this doll as his mom. But and the doll has a name, and the father didn't want the son to get teased because he took the like no she wants to watch TV with me and mm -hmm. all this and that it's, it's, it's just good and then you got another daughter who's a natural healer and she be selling her little weed and stuff and she got her sister together about about the funeral but they and then she's dealing with the man who's her I believe he's her ex or she's fucking him and he has a family and, and it's a white man and this is all going down in New Orleans and it's just so much Drama, like they all have their own drama, and then they're all dealing with the main big drama. And I'm thinking that, well, is it that they can't come together for the like they, the they, planning they, of the funeral? They they got the funeral, they had the funeral and everything, but you know now people want that property. Right. And like one of the guys thought that he could just come and take over the property because he found out that the father had passed away, and then they found out that he had a lot of debts and mm. things like that, mm. like. He just wasn't he wasn't keeping up. He just couldn't keep up with it no more. And he had a job too. The dad. Yeah, he died from a stroke. But one of the best one of the best parts that made me cry was that you knew that the grand the father was waiting to die until he seen that baby. He was like when he woke up, they was you know, the cards and stuff, and he was like they showed the baby, he's like, Where's that baby? And um as soon as the baby came, he laid with him. And then they all, the, the son, the, the, the son, the other son, and the father, they leave him in the bed and he passed away. And it was just, that scene made me cry. It was, it, it's a great show. It is so good. And I just can't wait for tomorrow. And Oprah, I want you to, I wish we could get like extra episodes because it's just really, really good. Oh yeah, and the daughter, the oldest daughter, I think they're trying to put her on a reality show too. And she's not here for no reality show. But there's like, no, you be the classy one and we'll just be the one that pull hair and throw glasses. And you know that's how we really is. Yeah. <laughs>
You're right. That's why I stopped watching Mexican Wives. Mm-hmm. It just got tired over time. It's tired. Yeah, I, I haven't even seen this new season of Basketball <laughs> Me Wives with Jackie and all them. I haven't seen it. It's tired. It, it, Kevin, I used to be so excited, but now it's like, I, and I found myself last week skimming through the TV and it came across the guy, and I just, like, <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 at a certain point, Kevin, for real, mm-hmm. it's like, you don't even realize that you are growing mentally. Until you realize that you don't want to watch reality TV no more. Like, I don't want to watch that anymore. Because every season is the same thing. Jackie is a troublemaker. She's she can't live without her. She can't live with, I mean, it's just like the same stuff. Y'all arguing about the same stuff over and over again. And don't get me wrong. I love me some reality TV. And I do love me some Housewives and all that. But I don't find myself as excited as I used to be mm-hmm. to watch it. Like for instance, I can miss a few episodes. I'm starting to realize that as I get older, I don't even find myself watching as much TV as I used to watch when I was younger. Like, you'll ask me, did you see this? And I'll be like, no. And they'll be like, I would rather sleep than watch TV. <laughs> like, it's like nothing gets, and it's like, well, okay, I missed it, okay, I'll watch it on, on demand. And I may not watch it on, on demand right away, but eventually I will watch it. But it's like, I don't find myself so excited about TV anymore because truth be told, there's nothing on TV. <laughs> now wait a minute, wait. Something I left out. The daughter that's a natural healer, mm-hmm. she also works for the newspaper. Mm-hmm. And the newspaper want to be like TMZ now because he's saying that, you know, these other fucking newspapers, they making more money than us. Mm-hmm. And you know, with the sister working at the newspaper, they know that she knows what's going on with her other sister and her husband. And this cheating scandal, and they want mm-hmm. her to mm-hmm. write stories about it. Now, bitch, can you imagine if she really started doing that? That's going to open another storyline yeah, for this shit. Is. Baby, <laughs> I can't wait. It's good. It's really good. Y'all have to watch Own. Because Own, y'all are just keeping it going with the drama. And I don't watch If Loving You Is Wrong, but it looks like it's really, really good. I'm just not, I just wasn't into it. But I feel mad because when I see the commercials, it looks really good. But then again, Om don't have it where you can watch the, the previous seasons. And I want to see it. Um, I watched Rob in China. I actually watched them today. I was supposed to watch it last night, but I was watching wrestling. Y'all know how that go. Um, I was watching Rob in China. And I like this mm-hmm. show. Now, for outs, I'm a, I'm a Kardashian outsider, mm-hmm. so I don't know all the storylines and stuff like that. All I know is how they introduced us is that China was friends with Kim Kardashian for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, when she broke up, she when she broke up, she stopped talking with to Kim when she broke up with Tiger because Tiger was dating her sister, and you know that was some crazy stuff going on. Mm-hmm. But she was saying that. Um, her and Rob got together or whatever, and they, they was friends, and then they got together. From what I remember them saying, and now she's um, she's his fiance, and you know that made the family go crazy a little bit. But what brought the family together was when they really found out that she was pregnant. So now we got Rob and China living in one house, and they're they basically to me they're getting to know each other while being a fiance mm-hmm. and having. And I'm just like, you can't make getting, this shit up. Getting to know, because they knew each other, but getting to know each other as a couple. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which I always felt, yeah, yeah, it is funny. I always felt that way too, because I was like, listen. <laughs> okay, of course they knew each other when she was friends with Kim. Of course. Mm-hmm. But we don't know to what extent that they knew each other. They may just knew each other, like, oh yeah, hey Rob, hey, you know, this and the third, whatever case with it. But it's like, to me, I always felt like, this particular relationship, while uh, while everybody was so for it, I'm ha- I'm so happy that they're together because China helped Rob get out of that depression state because he apparently was Dude, going through going. a depression phase mm-hmm. when he broke up with one of his girlfriends. Excuse me. And a lot of people were cheering her on for helping him get out of that state, which is always a good thing. I'm not disputing that. But I just felt like once all of a sudden they one minute they were dating and then the next week they were engaged. And then two weeks later, she was pregnant. And I was like, oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> just got engaged. As a matter of fact, they just started dating. Like, this all happened within like a year. Like, is this for real? Yes. This is really real. <laughs> Damn you, Chris Jenner. You sure do yes. know how to work. Yes. <laughs> and she's and I love me a Chris. I love me. You know I love the Kardashians. 
Mm -hmm. And I love Chris Jenner. But it's like, girlfriend, <laughs> if you're looking for a manager <laughs> and somebody who's going to bring them coins in, call Chris Jenner. Mm -hmm. But you got to be involved in some way with one of her daughters because yes. then you ain't going to get paid. But yeah, like it just all happened so fast. And I'm like, wow, this is really fast. Yeah. And, and fast. what I, what I like, like, you know, um, China, she has her little friends, like a little friends that's on the show. And basically, this episode was about infidelity and their relate, not infidelity, but insecurities and in their relationship. So, you know, after we got to know them and everything, we found out that um, China is having a girl. And, you know, Rob really wanted a son. And so he was kind of disappointed, but he's still happy at the same time. But I do feel for him because he is the last of his Kardashians, mm -hmm. of the Kardashians, and he, he wants to keep that name going forward and I'm just go back to something like something I noticed is that when I be on Ancestry.com and I found a whole bunch oh my god I found so many of my grandfather's people the Simmons name is long and I mean children got some of them got married some did, didn't but for the women it's hard because they don't carry on that Simmons last name and it was a lot more right. females than males so it's like I'm trying to find y'all but y'all done mar got married change your last name it's, it's just been hard so I really understand what he's saying what he means that he wants to keep his name on it hopefully if him and Black China keep it going that maybe they can have some more children and we got to see King on the show he's a cute little baby he's smart they got the name her son with Tiger, Tiger. yes and um, Rob, like you see Rob interact with him, like he's like they they are good. It doesn't look like they just threw them together and was like make it work. Like for me, I was thoroughly interested. It's a freshly new couple, and yeah. it doesn't seem fake. Mm -hmm. It just seems like they still got a lot of growing, growing together, together to do. Yeah, and it's but gonna be. It doesn't it's seem gonna fake. be tough, but it's not fake. I ain't get no fake genuine. from the show. Okay. Um, also, um, so they was laying there in the bed and China went to go brush her teeth and Rob was going through her phone and they were arguing about the phone. Like, I, she like, I see you change the password. Yeah, I told you before, like, you can't be going through my phone. And he's like, he's insecure. I don't know if he had a girlfriend cheat on him before. Well, I think that was one of the things with his depression. I know it had something to do with a female, mm -hmm. but I don't know to the extent of it. But I remember when uh, Adrian, when he was dating Adrian from The Real, mm -hmm. and when they were doing a Kardashians a few seasons ago and how that all turned out. I think he cheated on her or something like that and they had a big breakup and he was really depressed because he really loved her or whatever the case may be but she was just like over him mm. or whatever the case may be she didn't want to be with him no more and he really got depressed about that. But I, Rob Kardashian seems like a very sensitive guy mm -hmm. that when he breaks up with females he gets very very emotional. emotional. Mm -hmm. And so yeah he's going to have to learn me personally, I don't want to be with nobody like that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be with nobody who, the minute I change my password, I might just be changing my password because I might feel as though other people around me know my password too much. It may not have nothing to do with you. It just may be, I do it too much around other people, so I want to change it so that they, and then you get all emotional because now you don't know what it is. And it's like, come on, like, chill out. Like, you should already have faith in me that I'm not doing anything. And if you suspect that I'm doing something, then you shouldn't be with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they had a little argument fallout. China gets in the car. She's talking with her girlfriend like the next day or whatever. And she just was tired of Rob and his shit. And um, so Rob calls her and they got into a big argument. She was like, man, if you think I'm cheating, maybe you cheating. Because I know you texted other bitches. I know it. Who you text? Blah, 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 blah. That's what she was saying to Rob. Yes, on the phone. Curse him out. He gets to the house or she gets to his house, she kicks him out the house. You got to go. Bye, get out. <laughs> Rob goes, you know, you, you don't hear from Rob for a couple days and you know, Miss Jenna finds out and um, she's at the door when, what you call him, gets there and they talk about from his, China. Yeah, China and then Chris Jenner, like cause he had for her flowers and stuff cause he got mad and she's like, no, get out, take these flowers, she keep these flowers in the trash. She was just <laughs> carrying on for 50 days, 50 nights. <laughs> So then when they get to the, I'm trying to speed it up. So they get to the house. No, after she didn't hear from Robin a couple of days, she goes to his house. She can't find him. But guess who's sitting there? Christian. 
<laughs> so they started talking about what was going on. The mastermind. Yeah, and she was upset that the mother knows that she's pregnant. Like, why would you tell your mom? I mean, why would you tell your mom what we're hearing? He's like, that's my mom, all this and that. And she talks to him, and then she talks to Rob. Like, you know about his his insecurities and all of that stuff. And she's like, y'all got to make it work. And this is what Chris is saying. Yeah, Chris Jenner too, Rob, and then it goes off, and then they show all the camera on that's going to be happening. But for me, watching this as an outsider, I really liked it. Even the nanny, the nanny plays her part. She got um, China together, like, you can't be doing stuff like this. You can't be, like, kicking them out, and, like, you just can't be, like, a bridezilla and all of this stuff. Like, it was really good, and I'll be watching it next week. It's, it's just, as an outsider, I like it. I really like it. And I find Black China interesting. I always find it interesting. So, I want to know where is Amber Rose. Because the other girl that's on the show, she made it like, this is my best friend, blah, 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 blah. But it was you and Amber. Like, y'all, it was you and Amber against the world. Like, what's mm -hmm. going on? Will Amber Rose be on the show? Will she be addressed? I know Kim Kardashian will be on the show. So, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. So, I hope that you well, guys I don't care about Kim or... Uh Amber, I want Tiger, China, and Kylie to all be in the room together. Oh, my God. Can you imagine them all in the same room? Because what's going to happen when that baby's born? Because that's Kylie's niece. Yes. She better not get pregnant with Tiger. Why not? Like you, They're back together. That, oh, that is... Why? 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 why would you want to be related on both sides of the family? Why can't she be? No! She already slept with the man. That's <laughs> hopeful thing. Like, like, you know that's wrong on Wait, all levels. If they are together, Kevin, then why should she not get pregnant? Because they're together. Wrong. And they've actually like, been together longer than China. Like, so and, because and your children will or be. Or they've been together longer than China and Tiger. Your children will be <laughs> brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters and, and cousins. cousins. Like, they might even sleep with him when she's 15. That is some down 16, 16, 17. 16, 17. That, that is just wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah, you know he's been sleeping with her for a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, he turned that cherry out. Mm. And, and she bought him a new car. That's how I did it, bud. Hey, but you always had to think for time, remember? You used to have to think for him. No, he, you did. did I? Yes, you I did. Don't remember. You used to always thought that he was, you know, and I used to always like, oh. I did. You did. I don't remember. I bet you you don't. Because now he's with that white girl. <laughs> Most of you black women don't like him no more once you find out they're with a white woman. And a lot of women do get mad. <laughs> yeah. And I be not, but I don't know. I be noticing. And, 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 and a black woman will get you together real fast. Boom. They, they find out you're Nate Parker, and they, especially Nate Parker, because all the girls <laughs> thought he was fine until they seen his wife. Okay. And then if they seen his wife, the rape scandal came out. <laughs> I ain't supporting him. Because he did this, and he did that, and blah, 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 blah. Well, that's like Omari Hardaway. Go yes, it's all of them. Yeah, it's, 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 he's married to a real life Angela Dowdell. Yes, and I see. Well, she's not even short of age, but she's funny. She's pretty, but she's white. I mean, nothing wrong. With it's nothing wrong with being with a white woman. But, but it does make you go, hmm. <laughs> Just like I remember that article with with Jill Scott saying that when you see that a date man, a black man is dating a white woman, it stings a little bit. It does. And then I mean, for a lot of people, they go. In the hey, because then what makes it even worse is that his character was married to a black woman. He left the black woman for a Hispanic woman. <laughs> it's like, you know, I mean, and don't get me wrong, because to, to be quite honest with you, blacks and Puerto Ricans are black. we the same, okay? Yeah. We black people and Puerto Ricans are more closer than blacks yeah. are with whites, okay? Uh, blacks and Ricans, we are... When they, come, they are when light skinned brothers and sisters. Okay. When they come to that totem pole, they say white, Asian, Hispanic, black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they put us at the top. <laughs> of course they do. Okay? Oh, I see. And we need to be at the top because <laughs> we the ones that get the most sun. <laughs> I ain't going to do But yeah, so, but yeah, like how do y'all feel about interracial couples? Like, I think it's beautiful, but sometimes I do be like, I'd be like, wow, like a lot of these, especially the athletes, like they get these white women and they get married. And I don't feel any type of way about it. I don't feel any type of way about interracial couples, but I do feel some type of way when a black man tries to downgrade a black like, woman mm -hmm. by saying, oh, this is why I'm not with a black woman anyway. No, 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 no. no. You're not with the, I'm not going to speak for all black men, but for most black men, that, well, for some black men who are with white women, it's not because the black woman is ghetto or loud or whatever the case may be. 
No, you're with that white woman because she's easily manipulated and you can easily take advantage of her, okay? And you can do what you want to do and they're not going to question you because all they really want is, a, is that check, okay? Because mm -hmm. most white women will stay with you quicker than a black mm -hmm. woman will if they find out you're cheating on them, okay? Yeah, I wonder why my dad started dating white women. And he has a child by a white woman, but I've never had a... Clearly, your mother! No, bitch, you <laughs> Your mother is a piece of <laughs> work, okay? Hey, I Mark. came to here today, okay? And you witnessed it for your own self. Not today, but you witnessed it, man. I come in here, hey. Hey. <laughs> yes! That day when you told me, I will kick you out. <laughs> what? Real fast. Real fast. <laughs> I said, where's Nina? Oh, don't start your shit. I will kick you. You'll go home. I said, oh, damn. Because I asked Miss Nina, and five, not five minutes later, <laughs> Nina walked through the door. She's one of your brothers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> don't start your shit, he said. I think, I think I'm a topic of discussion when I'm not here. Oh, look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I am! Okay? It's not a good topic, but that's okay, because I come here to make. <laughs> I said, Mikael, come here to start his shit today, y'all. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> what Mikael started. What did I tell you? I told your mom something one day. She <laughs> said, <laughs> I think I think she said it must be quiet at your house, or I must have said it. I think it was her. And I said, yeah, because uh, <laughs> I don't have all this noise in my house. <laughs> she was like, then she looked at me like, oh, is that right? I said, yeah, I don't have all this noise in my house. A lot going on here. A lot. <laughs> a lot of people think this is the. the a lot of people think this is the free the community motel. center of twenty two. The free motel. <laughs> Nobody's. It's the only hotel I know where you don't have to pay. <laughs> now, bitch, <don't. laughs> you just drop the bags off. And keep the fuck. Ah, don't get nobody. No body. No ideas. The bags and kids. And I kids. walk in here one day and there's a child on the couch that does not live in this house. Why are you here and what are you doing? Oh, my mom had to go to the doctors. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Am I lying? I said, <laughs> Wait, do you know that child downstairs? Yes. Am I lying? No, I, said, I didn't know. I sat downstairs with this child for almost two hours trying to figure out where the mother was. <laughs> See, I, I, and if anybody on the other the upper floors knew that that child was down there, I sure did. Because there was no adults downstairs with the child. I said, Wait a minute, does anybody need to hear? Well, my mom dropped me off and told me she was going to the doctor's. When did that happen? Yesterday? And she ain't back today? <laughs> stop on her business. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, y'all. <laughs> no, this is not lying. I'm not lying. Because <laughs> I was, no, oh, wait a minute. Not, you know that so and so is downstairs? What? How did this happen? All day? I'm, 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 All day. And I got to let you a bowl of cereal. And I kept sitting. He was sitting there. I'm hungry. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. So he didn't eat all day. All Cause I don't come when I wake up. I don't go directly down, down, downstairs. No, a lot of people don't in their houses. Yeah. A lot of people don't go directly downstairs. I wasn't blaming y'all. I'm blaming the mother. Cause I'm, I'm like, okay, this is at school. You know, this is going right. on. Wait a minute. I walked in this house. I walk in this house like I'm. What TV show was that when the neighbor just walks in the house? What TV show is that the neighbor just walks in the house? Moesha. No, Where Moesha? I think it's like a white TV show. The neighbor just walks in. Three's Company? That's not, it's probably, it, it probably is these shows, but that's not the show that I'm thinking of. When it comes to me, I'll think of it. Um, I'll remember. I'll see. Yes. Yeah, because I just walked right on in. <laughs> and when I walked in and saw him, I knew something was wrong. Because I've been coming to this house for damn near 10 years, and I've never seen you sitting <laughs> on that couch. Hold on. By yourself. Oh yeah, but Barbara's waiting to see her got her together. I, I knew she, she did. And I heard my mom. <laughs> that's, that's how I know. I heard her. She heard her get together. Don't you ever. Ever. As long as your ass is the color ever as it is. Some shit she said. Don't you ever. <laughs> no child. In my, I know that's right. Without my permission. Without my permission. Because I walked right in this house. No, because so-and-so yeah. was supposed to watch Ain't no so-and-so nothing. I, yeah, like, I'm no. the owner of this house, so you tell me. I walked right in this house. I'm Kevin. I'm, I said, what, what you doing here? Because you know I started asking questions when I'm walking here. I got to know what's going on. What you doing here? Oh, my mom went to the doctors. When did she go to the doctors? Yesterday. Oh. <laughs> and it's today. Where's she at? She didn't come back. Ooh, bitch. That is some truth. I can't. I just can't. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't a decent Christian man, I'd have uh. his mother together right there, but he's a child and I couldn't tell him. Yeah, 
I said, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't believe her. <laughs> Lord, we got you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Hillary couldn't insane it yesterday. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not. But it's, it's crazy because, you know, for the past month or so, everybody been saying, oh, Hillary's sick. Look at her. Just look. And I mean, they ain't had no really evidence that mm -hmm. anything was wrong with her. They were just talking. Yeah, just talking. I guess just trying to discredit her, even though she had a big lead in the polls mm -hmm. and things like that. Well, yesterday, while trying to attend the 9-11 memorial service that was going on at the... Um, Ground Zero. One, yeah, Ground Zero. She fainted and she was having a hard time getting into the car like they were trying to get her to walk. And I mean, it's just a horrible video to mm -hmm. see. And if Donald Trump uses these and adds, oh my God, it's going to be big time. I don't know. I actually honestly don't think that he will because he and his team have instructed his surrogates and his support, well, the people who kind of work for them, not to go in. Not to go in. Because he even did an interview this morning that he says that he hopes that she gets better. He's faking. Well, of course, listen, <laughs> you ain't got to tell me that he's faking. Because we all know he's faking. But I like the high road that he's taking because it could have been reversed. He could have mm -hmm. been his regular old self and just been nasty. But like you said, that video for me was really hard to watch. Because they came out and they were saying that she was um, overheated and dehydrated. It was mm -hmm. one of the two of the things that they said. And... Watching it, it really was hard because it just looked like if anybody would have just let her go, she would have hit that ground. Mm -hmm. And it took me back to a few, like two, three years ago when I was dehydrated and I had to be taken to the hospital. And it is not a pretty thing. I was dehydrated, plus I had the um, stomach virus. It was a horrible, horrible experience. And it is true. You can barely stand. Like, before I went to the hospital, I was literally crawling to the bathroom because I couldn't even walk and I felt so dizzy. So I felt, once I found out that she was partially dehydrated as well, I felt, I said, my God, like, it's a horrible thing to go through. And it, 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 it's scary because you don't know, you don't really have any control yeah. over your body. You just don't have any control yeah. over your body when you're in that state and when it's really, really bad. And for her to have been diagnosed with pneumonia, two days prior to that, it's like it all makes sense. But like you said, it's such a coincidence that this, that, happened. that this happened because they've been trying to say that she was not healthy Especially enough Rudy Giuliani. And he got the nerve. Like, yeah, I pay him no mind. He's one of the devil's imps and I pay him Yeah, no I just, mind. it's just, it's just no bad mind. to see that with Hillary and Obama's coming to town tomorrow. I'm pretty sure he's gonna talk about it. I, I hope he don't come nowhere near my job because he's gonna be traffic at um, just the becomes. parkway. Be on the well, I hope he's going by the time I get off work because traffic, you know, when they presidents and vice presidents come to town, traffic is just yeah. they close about five or six blocks from where the hell they're going to be even be. That's at. right, because they got to get on them buildings, they got to make I sure. I understand that. that, but it's just a pain in the ass when you're trying to get somewhere, mm. and you already know how congested downtown it is. is. Yes. It, but they, you know what, though, I gotta give it props to the city and I had to give it to what's his name the mayor the former mayor because all of these buildings are going up they are just changing everything like they are really trying to compete with New York and compete with King of Prussia they want all the money to themselves so shout out to I forgot his damn name what's his name the former mayor Michael Nutter Michael Nutter his name slipped my mind because his face ain't I just didn't say the name but yeah um, what was we just, yeah, oh, I was talking the fainting thing, like, I haven't fainted in a long, long time, but there was a period where I would wake up, you know, like, wake up early in the morning, and I would go pee, and I would faint, like, it got so bad to where I had to go get my head checked out, but they were saying, like, you cannot, like, sometimes when you wake up, it's not good to just rush to the bathroom, um, when you wake up, just have a seat, yeah, it's not. Have a seat first, chill out, and then go to the bathroom. Because, I mean, one time I just literally hit my head. Like, there was nothing I could do about it. All I know, I just woke up and I was just on the fucking floor. So, yeah, be careful. Like, fainting, fainting ain't nothing to play with. It can just happen anywhere. But I hope that Hillary Clinton gets better. And, um, 
Yeah, she had to cancel a few appearances in California. But I would so. want her to get better, and so because you know the first debate is in fourteen days between yeah, her and Donald yeah, and Trump. Like Donald Trump. Trump, and I cannot wait. No, I actually think it's on a Sunday. I think it's September twenty sixth. It might be September twenty sixth. You might. When is the presidential debate? Let's see if you know. I can stand okay. her. I found this on the web for when is the presidential debate. Presidential debate. Say, let's the whole is um yes. moderating. I like that. And then Cooper will be doing it, and the lady from uh Martha Randis. Yeah. And Chris walked by. September twenty sixth. That's in. Yeah. So you're right. That's yeah. Monday. You're right. I would love for Joy Ann Reed to um, host because I like her. Do you watch Moon and Joy sometimes? No, but you know they wanted to get. They were explaining that the uh, presidential debate committee wanted to get uh, journalists and anchors who were not seen as being biased. Mm -hmm. And when you look at those people, Lester Holt doesn't. And, and I, I immediately go to Anderson Cooper because he's one of those people that you really don't know who the fuck. You know what I mean? But yeah. I like that about them because you know that they're not going to be biased on that stage. They're going to get Hillary together and they're going to get Donald together. And that's how it should be. Yeah. I would have liked for them to have gotten Barbara Walters, but she's a little too old. Uh-uh, no. Yeah. Let Barbara she's a little too enjoy old. her vacation. Yeah. I don't know where she's at now, but <laughs> she's... She didn't even come back for the 20th season of The View. You know she enjoy her vacation. Well, you know she's pushing 90. Yeah. She's going to be 90 like in a few years. She's old. Barbara Walters was old <laughs> on The View. They just had really good makeup artists. She's old, yes. I never forget that time when The View went on Oprah, when Oprah was um, still on, and they went on there and Oprah revealed how old she was. And you could see it in Barbara's face that, like, oh, let me tell you about how old I am. Because I don't, you know, Barbara Walters is from the old school when women don't talk about how old they are. And then when Oprah said it, and I was just like, oh, <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah. Um, so Lady Gaga came out with a new song on Thursday night, and it's called Perfect Illusion. Now, I really like this song. I wish the song was a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to wait for the music video. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy that Lady Gaga is back. Mm -hmm. I just wish it, because the song is three minutes, and it's very repetitive. Like, you, if you can't, you can pick up the lyrics and like that. I just wish it was longer, and... It's just, it's, it's scaring me just a little bit because I'm not sure how many people besides Lady Gaga fans would love it. I mean, it should be, should not be that hard, but I just expected something just a little bit more dancier. It's more of a 80s rock song. Mm -hmm. Again, I like it, but I don't know how many other people will like the song, or maybe it might take them to see the video. But I'm just glad that Gaga is back. So I'll be waiting to see Lady Gaga on the interview trail and all of that stuff. And um, the song is just basically like thinking that you were in love with this person, but it wasn't love. It was a perfect illusion. And I mean, she says it like a hundred times, and it's 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 a rock song. I like it. When was the last time she's come out with an album? Cause we haven't heard from her in about three years. She came amazing. out with Art Pop, yeah, three years ago. That was in thirteen. Mm -hmm. She did a jazz album with um, Tony, Tony Bennett. Bennett, and she got some songs on, like Lady Gaga can sing. And like, I'm glad that she no longer is a Halloween character, and that she is like her voice is now the main thing about her, and she can sing just about anything. And I still think about when um, Julie Andrews was standing for her at the Oscars mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. That's when I think she really revealed to the world like. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. And then you had Julie Andrews just going all yeah. like, come on now. You know you did that when she go off. Mm -hmm. So yeah, congrats to Gaga. And future. Before we get up out of here, you here. you cannot take credit for Sierra's career at all. Mm -hmm. You might have helped it at the back end part when, when she came out with that song with Nicki Minaj. Like, you really made a great album with her. I will give you that. But don't think that you created her relevance. 
Because Sierra came out in what, 2003. And every song she came out for the first five years of her career, they were hits. And you had nothing to do with that. Nothing. So you can't claim anything. If anything, Sierra really did upgrade you. Because I didn't know your songs, but I know you was in that Body Party video. And it was cute for y'all. Like, y'all were everywhere. Mm -hmm. Y'all were like the hottest thing. And then mm -hmm. y'all got engaged. And we thought it was cute when y'all had the little finger tattoos. And then you just fucked everything up. Like, I think you fucked it up. And now you really can't take it that she done moved on and moved on to somebody way better than you. More successful, has more money. And she married to him now. So now you coming out with a song calling her a bitch. You put that bitch back on the charts. Like, that's not a cute thing, especially when that is the mother of your child. Future, you have a lot of growing up to do. And, you know, I think it might be a Scorpio thing where he's jealous. And I think that if, if you're going to be jealous, I think you should keep the jealous portion to yourself. Because you're doing yourself a disservice. And to, you, you're doing a disservice to your child because your child future will grow up and hear the nasty things that you said about his mother and that can make him resent you mm -hmm. for a long time mm -hmm. and especially seeing how good of a father Russell is future you really need to chill it on out and stop coming at Sierra like that do your song sing a, I don't know what the fuck he's rapping about okay when your TV can't decipher what a man says I wonder how everybody else knows <laughs> But future, get it together. Become a All better. All I know is when he's saying I got bras in Atlanta. That's designer. That's not even future. Oh, well, then I don't know what he's saying. And designer got locked up this weekend. And he got out of jail too. Yeah. Cause and I I heard he ain't really had no drugs on him. Yeah. He had, the boys like, are throwing out that race car. Yeah. Yeah. Why he get locked up? Yeah. It could be true. Like what is? Why did he get locked? Is he only had like steroids in the car? And well, he's he young was, too. He's nineteen. Only like nineteen. He had a hard life. A hard life because I think he was older than that. Yeah, and he looks just like um Iman Shumper. Like I can't. But Iman looks better. Way better. And yeah. Iman also reminds me of the, um the Proud family, the um mm -hmm. the one that be coming on singing the whole time. <laughs> I miss that show. Anyway, y'all, we gonna get up out of here. Please have a good. You know, there's this girl at uh, Chick Fil A that looks like Roger off of American Dad. What, what's American Dad? Amer okay, American Dad. Who's the girl? Roger. Isn't Rod Roger's? No, some girl that works at this Chick Fil A. She looks just like him. Roger the one who's in the gallery in women's clothes. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, not the gallery. That's the only. I know it's the, the Liberty Place. Oh, well, hey. <laughs> she does. <laughs> well, don't be a shame. Is that? Was she working when they was slow? That bad? And you was over it? No comment. <laughs> Well, every day they slow, right? No, but they be getting people out of here like they. The Liberty Place Chick Fil A is the slowest Chick Fil A in America, and you know, uh, the owner of Chick Fil A would not. He'd be rolling his grave if somebody told him. Told him. First of all, you tried to help somebody call. Listen, yeah, on the main line, call around right that main line. Listen, <laughs> listen. There are three Chick Fil A's in the city of Philadelphia that I've been to. The one in the Liberty Place, the one on Delaware Ave, and then there's one all the way up the boulevard. Mm -hmm. The one up on the boulevard and the one on Delaware Ave are fast yes, and yes, friendly. Yes, they are. Why yes, are they, they fast are. and friendly? Because it's mostly mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> Working and serving. And they get you out of there. And they get you out of there and they're very pleasant. Mm -hmm. The one in the Liberty Place <laughs> is all <laughs> of us. <laughs> and they're slow and sometimes ignorant. And when they're not ignorant, they are slow. Mm -hmm. But when you call them, there's not a rude person on the phone. But when you call them, there's not a rude person on the phone. Oh, they're very, very um, well bred on how to say, my pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. They all say, my pleasure. After, after they took 10 minutes with a damn number one. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Yes, Everything's my pleasure. Okay? Sometimes they say my pleasure all the time. Mm -hmm. That's their my pleasure. But maybe they're just not used to the rush that they be getting. Kevin, yeah, they are at the Liberty Place. The Liberty Place. Have Have you seen? The I don't even see how all them stores be in there because first of all, some of them stores be empty as fuck. Have right? you seen the Liberty Place during lunch hour? It is packed in there. 
Y'all should have a system. First of all, Chick Fil A is the pack, the, pack, the most crowded restaurant yeah, yeah. in the everybody everybody want their food. Because everybody wants. But excuse me. But what I'm saying is, they need to get more people in a better system. Okay. Excuse me. Because if y'all are that crowded, then maybe the owner of the Chick Fil A at Liberty Place needs to Make uh, it a little move, bit bigger. move that particular Chick Fil A down to one of the larger. You know what yeah. I mean? And hire more people. Because it'd be so, and even during the breakfast time, it'd be slow. And it don't even be that many people there at breakfast. But see, when I worked for a restaurant, well, McDonald's, the system was, all you do is you take orders. Don't turn around, don't get no food. You just take, keep taking orders while you got a runner that's getting the food and somebody else that's on at each station where it's, it's a smooth transition. Now, on that table, that's a different story, but... Just keep taking orders. There's no reason why you can't keep that system going. I don't get it. Bro. I don't get it either because they be so slow. But them people need to get the orders. It's not that hard because certain food don't even come. And then you get stuff. there, and then and then you get there, and, bitch, my stuff and there's hurt. one person on the register. <laughs> yeah, I hate I hate that with any store. But there's about fifteen thousand people, people in the back. And the, Running their mouth and talking to their you mouth at Wendy's downtown at 15th for Chestnut. Okay. There's always somebody running their mouth. Always. And 11th for Chestnut. Always. Y'all be doing two And that, Wendy, that, that, new Wendy, that new Wendy's that's down on, what's yeah. the name? They, not only are they always running their mouth, but they give you what they want to give you. <laughs> not what you order, but what they want to give you. Yes, because my friend said, ordered cheese fries from out of here. This mm -hmm. cheese. They had the nerve to take the cheese, the shredded cheese, and sprinkle it on top of her french fries. No! She pulled it out of the bag and said, excuse me. <laughs> what the this cheese is not supposed to be sitting here on top of my french fries. So she said, well, what you mean? She said, you see that right there? And pointed to the time and said, don't you see that that cheese is melted on those fries? Oh, you man. just dug in the bag and just sprinkled this on there. You try. I need y'all to put this in the microwave. Where's the manager? And where? <laughs> the manager. She was talking to the manager. Oh, no. On that note, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs>